Canting, but tasting our marshmallows. <laughs> uh, mm. <laughs> we we haven't started. Poke, poke. We are live. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> All right, welcome to the professional start of 143 story trios. Uh, we are um, going to take you through our new book. This I'm Andy, obviously. This is uh, Terry. Terry, I'm going to do the words, and Terry is going to do the uh, pictures. pictures, right? And uh, sorry, we're a bit intent on uh, our marshmallows here, as you, you might know. We've got a new level in our treehouse called the camping ground level, and uh, we have a fire and we have marshmallows. But there's what? something wrong Fire's with this fire. Hot, it's Andy. not very hot, is it? Uh, I think we need to check it. Can you have a, a closer just look poke, at it for poke, me? Poke, uh, poke my marshmallow in. Yeah, it. well, we know that's not working. Just, well, you just have a, use your eyes. Just look a bit closer. Uh, a little bit closer. Yeah, a little bit closer. I is I it hot? Yeah. Is ah, that hot? Yeah. Is that yeah. hot? Ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> is it? Is it hot? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, no, not really. Right. Yeah, I knew there was something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I think we um, should. Uh, by, before we go any further, never push uh, your friend's face into a fire. Yep. I, uh, yeah. Unless, ex -friend. unless he's Terry. <laughs> Ex-friend, I think we'll say. All right. We've got some questions. Well, let's get on with them. My name's Harry. My question is, do either of you actually have a treehouse? Treehouse? Um, Harry... Have you not been paying attention? We have a 143-storey treehouse. With th we're now with 13 brand new levels, and we're now going to play a game called Guess the Level. And Terry is going to give us a clue as to what the new level is, and my job and your job is to guess what, what it is. All right, Terry, level oh, okay. number one in Let's... the new treehouse. Let's imagine a uh, special machine. Yeah, uh, looks like a brain it, uh, with eyes. Words. Um, yeah, the words. Uh, words. Words come out of those like exhaust pipes. Yeah, and no? it seems it, to be happening kind of. Uh, yeah, maybe oh, automatically. words. Words. It, it's almost like a flying word machine. Words. Would we call that a wordomatic? We would. Yes, a word the new wordomatic well that knows every word in the whole world, uh, including rude words too. Oh. and it also knows the meaning. Uh, no, we don't want to see or hear no. any rude words today. Well, Not really. Uh, number about? two. No, like no. Number two. It is a what number is, two you're going to give us a hint. Got, well, let's imagine um, um, I've been drinking a drink. Um, yeah. Enjoying what sort it. of Still drink have you been drinking, Terry? Um, it would be <laughs> it's a. Made all um, your hair fall off. Sweet, <laughs> sweet drink. Which, uh, yeah. and I put the can on my head. Yeah. Can. Is it a drinking and game? I am about. No, it's <laughs> not a drinking game, Andy. That, that's. Well, well, why have you got the can? The the, why, why is the can on your head? The can is in my head on my head because I'm about to pitch it into this bin. Right. Dip, 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 your dip, whole dip. head or just the can? Just the can, Andy. <laughs> just the can. I think and it makes a nice hat. And I'm doing something very special that we should probably all do. And I've re uh, there's a lot of things that are just um, rolling around, rolling around. <laughs> what sort of bin is it? Replacing. It's a, that is a... Um, wow, is it, well, it's a recycling uh, bin. Correct. That's the one. And, of course, that's uh, a hint to our new recycling depot level where there is lots of junk, lots of fun to be had. All and right. then there's another level. Okay, yes, level this number one. three. What, what is it? A large Whoops. <laughs> ball. On I a think crane. everyone at home just guessed what it was, but 
It looks like a, a balloon attached to a uh, it's large... It's a very tent. strong balloon and it's... Um, I think it's a, a big steel ball and it's coming towards a brick wall and I would and say... the balloon, ha the, the, uh, the uh, wall has a, a very familiar face. Our new wrecking ball <laughs> level. But he's not face Sorry. on the wrecking ball. No! Yeah, we love to see Terry's head being used as a wrecking ball. Revenge! For using my head as a bowling ball back in 13-storey treehouse. No, I didn't it do was, well, it happened no, all no. the time, so I don't think it was a mistake. Um, perfect size for a... The uh, next picture is level four, uh, a place where you might go to get some relaxation. Where would there. that be? And we all need triangle. relaxation just at the moment, and especially I'll here at the Wheeler Centre on stage. Some feet sticking out of this uh, triangular... Yeah. Building, a, a dead and there's a little fire over here, some logs. Uh, hang fire, on, logs. I know, and we're and actually here already. People sitting on the logs. I'll bet it's the camping ground level. It is the camping ground oh, level. Oh, yeah, I get, I get it every time. What a clever boy. There's our new camping ground level. We'll be, we'll be returning to that in a minute. And um, uh, what we've got here now is what we might call... Number... Seven, six, five. I'd call it number five. Four, yep. three, two, one. <laughs> Looks a bit like a. Um, and in that basket, basket there uh, are that you'd bring food to your sick grandmother. Um, no, uh, things that are just uh, oh, golly, what would you call uh, it? Sticks, sticks, just, uh, an uh, axe. Axe, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very, axe. um, very um, um, titanium. The ha hardest oh, that's very hard, isn't it? Metal in I the got it. It's a too hard basket. That's very, very yes, good. Yes, we good. have a whole you basket know. full of too hard things, uh, including my favourite, which is a book called How to Play Chess with a Blindfold in a Dark Room with No Chessboard and No Chess Pieces. That's a book that's dying to be written. <laughs> dying to be written. All right. What's the. Um, this is a very. Um, mm, it's an ant. Just a simple ant. See, it's, it looks like a Blair. robot ant. It, uh, really it like could it. easily be a robot ant. It's got some wheels. Yeah. Um, and how big would it be, oh, roughly? It's, it's like, not that if there big, was a person would, standing next oh, to it, how... about it, that big. Wow, that's a super big ant. And it is a super big level. That's, of course, what it is. A level, super big stuff. Everything is big. The mice are big, the uh, frying... Frying uh, pans are big, <laughs> the kettle is big, and... Big buildings. All right, what's our, what's our next level? We've got uh, what we might call the um, to hole in the ground. Hole in the ground. Stuff it's is stuff flying is out. The stuff's, uh, these little things are... Beans? Bean beans? Yeah. yeah this, and there's would millions that be a, of them. a baked bean geezer? That is geyser? I never know a how to say it. baked bean geyser. You'd say geyser, yeah. You say geyser. I, I say geyser. And uh, that explodes on the hour, every hour in our treehouse. So if you like baked beans, get down there and whoa, um, whoa. start eating. Because <laughs> as fast as you can eat them, the, uh, they keep coming. Oops, I've just drawn you flying up uh, out of it all. Yeah, I've, I don't know what I was doing in there, but uh, probably getting more. Okay, uh, the level number eight is a very... This one, mm. Wanted. Wanted? Is it a wanted poster? It is where, a wanted poster. Where would we find one of those, I wonder? Uh, anyone anyone at home want to have a guess old here? Hat. Um, got a... Uh, what we might call a miner's outfit. Um, he's got a uh, oh, spade. Yeah. He's, well, I don't know what uh, he's doing jumping out of the whole wanted out poster. <laughs> That's very confusing. I might have What's to he wanted for? Some kind. Of, he's wanted for um, just being annoying. Ah, well, that would probably be me. And that would be in the Ye Olde World Historical Indeed, Village, where you can go back in time and have an adventure in Ye Olde World uh, times, full of robots, too. So, a lot of fun. And What's this one? 
That looks like a uh, some sort of uh, bird drinking a milkshake. It's a penguin. It's a penguin. And in that milkshake is a fish tail. Fish. It's the fish milkshake bar. That's the one uh, with fish milkshake and bar. All I don't the penguins at the at the bar drinking. I don't fish know why we built this level because I hate it. I hate fish milkshakes. Uh, they're too fishy. They're oh. too milky. And stop carping. <laughs> The penguins seem to like it, though. And um, level oh, number that could 10. give you everyone a clue as to what's going on in the next level. Ah. If there's something you don't like, and there's someone, they don't look very happy, and that person <coughs> neither happy. Blah blah blah. Yeah, are they would they be complaining about things? Do you think annoying? It could be the new complaining room, where if you've got a complaint and uh, you may have a lot of complaints about this presentation, uh, go to the complaining room and tell <laughs> it to someone who cares. <laughs> uh, quite hard to find. All right. What and about all uh, oh, this one? Um, this is uh, well. I don't know what it is. What is it, Terry? This is a very place, Andy. Somba is sad. Uh, yeah. Uh, Would we find ghosts there by any chance? That ghosts looks like there. Fred, the ghost of a ghost of a ghost. ghost yeah. That's beep, beep. you'll you'll read and about that in the new book. A ghost who dies three times. Well, a man who dies becomes a ghost. The ghost dies, becomes a ghost of a ghost, and then the ghost of a ghost dies and becomes the ghost of a ghost of a ghost. And you would find that Fred hanging around in a graveyard, graveyard. spooky graveyard, Whoa. where it is midnight even in the middle of the day. That was uh, a lot of readers have asked for that one, so there you go. Um, it's, uh, what I do like is that one of the, the headstones is for rent. So if you don't know if you want to be dead or not, you can just go rent out a grave, uh, a, a gravestone, a grave, um, a, cof a coffin, a, a tomb, a tomb for a little while. And if you don't like it, just hand the rent back. A hole in the uh, ground. What are you drawing here, Terry? Now these are um, little toffee apples that someone ah. has been nibbling, and there's someone in there Shouldn't who they, should be protecting. It looks them. like a toffee apple orchard, but there should be someone. There should be a scarecrow protecting the toffee apples against children who keep stealing all our toffee apples. Yeah, but he's not quite up to the job. Well, he looks scary. What's wrong with him? Um, well, I think the problem really is that he loves children. Oh, he's a kind scarecrow. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to get rid of him, but I don't have the heart. <laughs> uh, uh, he's, just burn him. He's, he's so nice. No, he's too nice. He's too nice and kind. We're just going to have to put up with not many toffee apples. Yeah, and, and sad children. Crying. All right. The uh, toffee kids. apple orchard is where you get your toffee apples. And we have now almost done all 13 levels. What is the 13th level? This is a very uh, scary one, this one. Yeah, and I think a lot of you out there should know what it is because you have asked for this for a long time. It is... And we can see the little critter here. I didn't think we could see what was living in this deep, dark cave. Um, well, I've got a special light I've put here that um, <laughs> that uh, shines. Um, and maybe, you know, it's just an illusion. I'm not sure. Is it supposed to be a dragon? <laughs> There's fire coming I've out of it. I've never seen a more non-dragony looking dragon Except in my life. Except for this sign here. This is a dragon. Gone. That's ah, the deep, dark dragon cave. And which it's a purple dragon. Could be really useful for getting rid of hobby hours, uh, should you happen to it may be have helpful. Any, an infestation in your camping ground. Okay. I think there's a reader's question. Let's Hello. go. I'm Dylan and I'm nine years old and I'm blind and I've listened to all the Treehouse audiobooks. And my question is, how did you come up with an idea about such a crazy treehouse? How <laughs> did we do that? 
What an excellent uh, question. I don't... Actually, I think we were working on a book with me and you in it, yep. and uh, we were going to write about not being able to write the book because you were so distracted and wasting so much time all of the time. That doesn't and sound I th- like me. It does. It is, Terry, and it is you. And we, uh, I said, can you draw me a treehouse with a bowling alley and a tank full of man-eating sharks and a, um, and a marshmallow machine? that follows us around and fires marshmallows into our mouth whenever we're hungry. And the, um, I, I watched Terry do this. He was actually on task. And he drew <laughs> not just a couple of levels, but a tree with 13 levels. And you can see here where on his... Uh, uh, the, three, the 13 levels. So that just was an accident that there Swimming was 13. Pool. And I was really impressed by the, the drawing... But then I thought, where's all the things I asked for? And Terry said, just shut up a moment, Andy. I haven't finished. And he drew this next... um, He added all the detail. There was that bowling level. Yeah, you can see him doing it live here. And you can see the finished second draft. And even then, if I'd drawn that, I would have died happy. But Terry still wasn't happy. And he then took it to a third level and suddenly it was alive. It was a world I wanted to live in. It was the treehouse I always wanted and, and providing the perfect distractions for not getting the, uh, the, the work done. So <laughs> that's how we started and then when we went to do another one we added another 13 levels and on and on, on and, and on, on and on for 11 long years. One forty-three. I love your crazy ideas for your books, and how do you come up with all your ideas for your books? Well, um, thank you, Finian. Uh, it's actually uh, it's it's not a it's not crazy. It's actually a story is a series of problems and solutions. My first problem, obviously, is Terry that I'm stuck with an illustrator who never does what he's told and is never doing his work. But also, it's been quite a, uh, a, a difficult 18 months, as you all know. And I was getting a bit exhausted. My biggest problem was I couldn't get my porridge to the right temperature. Uh, it was either too hot or it was too cold. And sometimes it was too hot and too cold all at the same time. And so Terry suggested a great solution, which was that we go on a relaxing holiday in our new camping ground level. Now, that could have been the end of the book, but really a book needs to be longer than a couple of pages. So I had to invent a new problem. The the second problem was that everybody in the treehouse wants to come along with us. And there was just not enough room in the treehouse truck for all of those silly penguins, uh, fancy fish, Trunkinator, Mary, Lollipoppins and Edward Scooper hands, um, Pinchy, Pinchy Crab, uh, the, the three wise owls. And so uh, the solution was, you've drawn one elephant in the time I've been talking. This is why it takes a year to write each book. But it's a really, really good elephant, and I just need to get. I know it's a nice elephant, but we're moving on. We're going to add extra trailers to the treehouse truck, and so everyone came on the holiday with us. And the when we got to the um, camping ground, you'd think that was the uh, the end of the story, but Terry forgot to pack something very important. What was that, Terry? Um, um, it, it may well have been somewhere to sleep the night in. Yeah, it's called a tent. Uh, instead of a tent, he brought a giant pepper grinder from the giant pepper grinder level and poor Trunkinator got some out of his trunk and he had to get out his giant handkerchief to sneeze, which was the solution to our tent problems. Uh, we used the Trunkinator's handkerchief chief for shelter. Now, the next problem, I told Terry, make sure you pack the food... And what did you forget to pack, Terry? Well, who need who needs food? Andy? I need food. When you're out in the lovely, lovely countryside, who yeah. needs food? Well, I do. I need it all the time, whether I'm in the countryside or not. And so we had a solution. We went fishing. And normally a relaxing activity, but when you're in a boat 
full of every animal and scarecrow and robot in the treehouse, uh, there's a problem. There's too many and the boat sinks. So now, how do you it's solve very this quickly. problem? I didn't have time to draw it. <laughs> okay, it's gone. Uh, okay, yeah, we're all in the water now. And um, drowning, no one looks very upset, except for me, because I'm supposed to be having a relaxing holiday. Uh, the solution, pretty simple in this case, was to swim to shore and chop the wood for a fire to get oh. warm and dry. Chopping wood, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, chopping wood. And uh, the problem is that Terry chopped me instead of the wood. In fact, he chopped me in half with an axe. Um, very painful. It was that, it's a very hard drawing to draw this one, Andy. He said it was a mistake, but I'm not totally convinced that... Whose fault was it? Was it the axe's fault? <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine you saying that there. It's a very good drawing of your intestines, though. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't think anyone really wants to see that. Oh, okay. I'll throw what it. are those two circles on my oh, that's side? That's your kidneys. <laughs> Just to um, solution. Make it accurate. Solution. Terry staples me back together with a stapler from the super big stuff level. So he forgets the tent, he forgets the food, brings a super big stapler and a super giant pepper grinder. Um, but it worked. And uh, then we got to our next problem, which was how to amuse ourselves around the campfire on a spooky camping trip. And there's a very... Uh, you're a, is that a spooky stapler? It's a vampire stapler. <laughs> Uh, let's talk. That's let's perfect. Let's talk. Let's tell spooky stories around the campfire. And um, we've got a really scary story for you right now. And the first thing you need when you tell a spooky story is do um, uh, you want a torch? Torch. Okay. Can you position that on my face so it's extra Whoa. scary? Whoa. 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 That's not, that's not scary, just shining a torch oh, okay. to my eyes. Uh, let's start again. Yeah, let's. Whoa, whoa, right. whoa, Is anyone scared whoa, here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Give me that. You, I'll do the story. Oh. You do the pictures, all right? And do it sensibly. We really want this to be spooky. All right. What if I get them out of order? You won't get them out of order because I put them in order before the show, all okay. right? It's number one to... Well, I don't know any numbers after one. Um, That's true. <laughs> or uh, what the order is. Uh, it, anyway, let's, uh, let's try. Let's, uh, let's do the spooky story, which is called The Witch. The Witch. Once upon a time, there was a witch. Ooh. Ooh. And a big, fat, hairy spider. Ooh. A big, fat, hairy... Terry, that's not a big, fat, uh, hairy spider. Uh, it looks... Uh, Right. Is that any better? Uh, not really. Have you got oh. the spider that I put there? Oh, yeah, there's a spider there. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. Um, okay, back to... You just made everyone laugh, I think, but don't worry. I'm only trying to tell a spooky oh, story. Sorry. sorry. All right. Um, Com concentrate. And then a full moon passed with a dark cloud passed across it. Whoa! And that... Is not a full moon with a dark cloud passing across it. That is a kid playing with some pots and pans. Well, it's just trying to save time. Yeah, that's nothing to do Maybe with it. Maybe like that then. That's what I wanted. Thank you. Um, there was also a vampire puppy out looking for bum, blood. Bum, bum, bum. Fresh blood. Bum. All right. Vampire puppy. No, that is three puppies. chihuahuas. Puppies. I don't know if any of them are puppies. It's hard to tell. They... 
and they have to wear, be wearing black. And then, Are you having rah. fun? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Was it's, fun for a second. Can I just check with the uh, the viewers? Is anyone scared by this uh, picture of three chihuahuas Grrr. with oversized vampire fangs? All right, I'm a little bit scared. That'll have to do. There was three vampire chihuahuas oh. and a zombie kitten. Bang. No, that's the that's the the damn vampire that we wanted in the first place. Uh, there was a zombie kitten. Bang. That's right. scary. No, neither of them are zombies. No, no, they no. are kittens, but <laughs> they're not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is, that is kind of scary. More bigger. Grr, grr. I think they're meant to yell brains. Aren't brains. They? Zombies just yell brains all Eat day long. Brains. <laughs> All right, there was... Uh, I haven't there was, been here. Oh, yeah, okay. Go there on. Was, yes, you have. There were two <laughs> <laughs> zombie <laughs> kitten vampires and the most... Well, one of the most scary of all, a haunted peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> haunted. <laughs> all right. Uh, that is the uh, uh, ye olde picture of the royal family. Having a, a sit in the park. I cannot see a haunted picture, a haunted by peanut butter sandwich anywhere. Well, I've got brown here somewhere. I can stick peanut butter out of it. Uh, okay, well, it's right. purple peanut butter. Don't you, know, it. you know who you've just put inside a uh, haunted peanut butter sandwich? Um, some old lady. Not just any old, some old no lady. One. It is, uh, she's not going to be amused by this. <laughs> She's, she's often not amused. <laughs> now my pen's died. She's already crossed at the Prime Tragic. Minister. She's killed my pen. And now, now she'll be after us as well. Well, okay, all right. All right. Haunted peanut butter sandwich. Maybe more like this. Picnic. <laughs> That's better. That's what I wanted. Thank you. And now we can get on with the story. And then a mysterious floating head. <laughs> Oh, we're back to kittens. That, very, very that is not a floating head. That kitten has a body attached. Now, either get rid of the body or... It's got viper, viper right, tongue. Right, well, it wasn't... <laughs> it's still got a body, Terry. That's beep. the problem. Beep. Beep. Yeah, um, funny. Uh, it's still got a, okay, there's get rid of the body. Uh, there's a bone and there's a rib cage. Yeah. So the body is completely gone. Well, no, if a, if a body has a rib cage, it's not completely gone. It's Skeleton. not floating. All right, I'll just change the story. There was a mysterious skeleton kitten. Yep. A uh, viper kitten. And then a screaming caterpillar that just screamed and 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 screamed. Screamed. Where is the caterpillar? The screaming the, the, caterpillar. That's, I, that's a bit like a caterpillar. A bit. <laughs> it's not like the caterpillar at all. And it, mm. and oh, we have the screaming caterpillar. Ah! The end. Thank goodness. How do you spell the end, Andy? A, 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 a E N D. Full stop. Ah. Oh, that well, was a wonderful story. I hope you're not too scared there at home. Um, I know I'm not very scared. I'm more angry, I think, because you wrecked the, the, the spooky stories, Terry. Ah, ah. <laughs> Let's see if there's... Uh, I don't know what's happening now. You've messed me up. Oh, Edith is here. I, I like the elephant, but why boxing? Why a boxing elephant? Why a boxing elephant indeed? Mm. Well, sometimes ideas are sent to us by our readers, and some of our readers are very talented illustrators, um, almost in some cases more talented than Terry Denton. And uh, one of those Not readers hard. was uh, called Lewis, who um, sent me a picture many years ago of a elephant in a boxing ring having a boxing match with me, and it's a heavy metal elephant, and um, the 
the, the illustrator was called Louis Lewis Forster, and he's now a uh, famous rock star in the Goon Sacks. So from uh, little things, big things grow. We took that idea, it amused us greatly, and we added, we, well, we, uh, we kind of put the boxing glove on the end of the trunk, and the Trunkinator was uh, born and became a very popular treehouse in the, is that, that looks like an echidna nator, um, a skateboarding yeah, I, echidna nator. I th forgot about what an elephant looks like, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. It's, uh, I like that. We could use that in the next book. I forgot its other leg Hi, too. Hi, I'm Nosley and I'm eight years old. I, I'm in hospital for my leukaemia treatment at the moment and I love your books. My question is, what was your book, favourite book when you were young? Thank you very Bye. much. No, <laughs> see you later, Novali. And um, thank you for the question. And you're going to be very excited to know that a important member of the Treehouse team, who, whose name is Jill, uh, her favourite book was Pippi Longstocking, which is exactly the design you had on your pajamas there. Um, mm -hmm. And Jill, in the in the book, is a lot like Pippi Longstocking: strong, independent, strong enough to lift a horse lives in a house by herself. So that was Jill's favourite book. Uh, my favourite book was The Magic Faraway Tree by Enid Blyton about a tree full of uh, crazy, uh, unusual, unexpected things that would happen all day long. And it had lands up the top, which is perhaps where I get some of the inspiration for the stories in the uh, story treehouse. And Terry's, as you can see... Mine was, was um, Treasure Island, which I had a special um, graphic novel version of. And I loved the whole pirate thing and just the whole idea of being on an island and um, being bit, scared. And a bit of... Being uh, scared at night. And a bit of Captain, uh, Captain Woodenhead seems to have crept in there. Is yep. That where you're <laughs> taking your inspiration for... The pirate stuff in 26-storey treehouse? That is exactly right. Um, what a fine-looking pirate. Love the idea pirate. of pirates. And most pirates have a wooden leg, but this one has a wooden head, <laughs> which I think is a real innovation which is in a lovely pirate idea, Andy. stories. Uh, we have a text from Rachel. Which of the books is our personal favourites? Well, for me, that is easy. It's the 130-storey treehouse because it's full of flying eyeballs. And if there's one thing I've loved reading about over the years in all the kooky science fiction I love, it's eyeballs. Endlessly funny, endlessly stupid, and uh, we've got a whole book of them in there. So that's my personal, personal favourite. Terry, what is yours? Mine is the 65-storey treehouse because we got into the whole idea of uh, time travel. Yeah. And um, we, uh, we eventually were looking for what kind of thing they could travel around the world in, around the universe. And eventually... A TARDIS? Well, yeah, it could be a TARDIS, could be you know, a Concorde, could be... Um, um, a wheelie a, bin. A bed, could be anything. But eventually we decided on that glorious thing, the wheelie bin. I um, think it's always a good thing to go, uh, go out to your own wheelie bins and tip all the rubbish out, get in, and see if your wheelie bin is actually a time machine. There's yep, a, you must try and do that. Yeah, and don't worry about all the rubbish everywhere because uh, you can just go back in time and pick it all up and you won't get into trouble from your <laughs> parents. So hours of, uh, years of fun, especially if your time machine is broken like ours always seem to be. And there's Andy's legs that, Oh, sticking I thought out it was it. two snakes travelling through <laughs> the uh, universe. Okay. It could easily be two snakes. Beautiful. Here's a important Hi question. Hi, Andy. My question is, why is Terry always the funny one? I reject the premise of your question, Flor <laughs> Florian. I am the funny one. Uh, I write all of Terry's funny lines, and so I think Terry would agree with me there. Well, I, I would have to agree with you. I mean, uh, remember that time when uh, you were wandering around in a, in a cow paddock with... 
a cow, cow pad, pad on, on my, your head. That was not funny. That was that, hilarious. I don't think that was funny at all. And I found this old drawing of it. I, yeah? What's, what, well, what's funny is that having a cow pad on your head is funny to begin with. Yeah, no, well... But um, having uh, two cow pads on your head, that's, uh, that's even funnier. That's tragic. And yeah. um, <laughs> maybe you've got a purple cow pad on your head. Yeah. That's three. Yeah. That's getting better. The fourth one, I don't know what colour this is going to be. Uh, brown? Uh, black. Like just a, a wild Traditional guess. black. <laughs> In fact, you know, I, uh, what has probably happened here is I've lost my brown pencil, so it'll have to be a blue cow pat. Yeah. So and, and yeah, eventually. It's getting <laughs> sadder and, and sadder. Just the huge more huge, ca- you actually turn into a, a great cow pat. Uh, no, I don't think Stinky. I did. Oh, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I think you, we have to move on. Well, I'm, I'm just. Uh, How long does it take you? to make a book from planning to getting on the shelves at the bookshop. Well, as you can see, a long, long time because someone keeps drawing the wrong things. But... um, I think that's a bit unfair. Okay, carry on. There is a lot of writing and drawing, generally about a year, um, and uh, we have to write and draw and draw and write and write and draw. And also then we have to get it to Mr Big Nose uh, at Big Nose Books, our publisher, and we have to deliver it in through the window. Uh, It has to go to the printer. It has to be put in boxes, delivered to bookshops um, and libraries and uh, e-readers and uh, special technology, direct-to-brain technology helmets, which are still in their prototype stage. I don't recommend anyone actually tries one of those. The, uh, the latest book took extra long because we had an unexpected visitor in the treehouse, as we did, uh, many other people did as well. Uh, ours chased us all around the treehouse. Um, what do you... That, picture of me with the cow pat looked a little bit like the coronavirus, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, let's let's uh, play with that. Terry had a lot of trouble figuring out how to use masks over your mouth, Terry, not Thanks. your eyes. And uh, eventually it sat on us uh, for quite a long time, uh, but we were saved by a vaccination fairy. And there is our public service announcement for the day. <laughs> we, we have lived it and we recommend it. Yeah, um, vexed. That looks like a, a landmine, um, <laughs> unless it has a face. <laughs> yeah, it's got to have an evil face, doesn't it? Yeah. Hello, my name's Libby, and I'm... Hello, my name's Libby, and I'm six years old, and I'm wondering how many animals you still have. Well, that is a really good question, Libby. Wow. Um, a lot. And, uh, of course, it started when Jill fell off her parents' boat and was floating around in the ocean, found an iceberg to climb up on, and there was a little cat on top of that iceberg, and that cat was called... Silky! That's correct. And then then two dogs climbed up onto the iceberg as well. They were Lumpy and Laika. And a goat called... The goat called Manny! And three horses... Called? Larry, Curly and Moan, actually. Of course. Four goldfish. The fish pistols. One cow. One cow, Pat. And six rabbits. That's just too, too many, many to, to name. name. And two guinea pigs. One called Phil and the other called Pink. I think you'll find one was called Bill and the other one called Pink. Phil. No, the Pink was not a big guinea Pink. pig. Pink is the... Donkey. Camel. One camel called Pink. Pink. I should have known you couldn't even do this. And a donkey. And a donkey called... Mr. Hee-haw. Right. And here they are living happily ever after in Jill's house. And uh, that leads us on to another text where everyone's always asking this. Is Jill a real person? And also the second most asked question, does your publisher actually have a big knows. And I'm going to answer that with one photo of uh, all the real people in the room at the same time. There's Terry uh, on the left-hand side. I think it's on... Well, it's my, my left anyway. Uh, Claire Craig is the, Mr., the true Mr Big Nose. You'll notice she's actually uh, not a, an angry man with a big nose, but a lovely tempered woman called Claire. And... Um, uh, of course, 
I'm exaggerating. She's always wanting her books, but uh, that's, that's the real Mr. Big Nose. Uh, that's me uh, next to Mr. Big Nose. And next to me is Jill, who is definitely real. Otherwise, I must be married to an uh, imaginary and person. There is... is uh, there is uh, Mr. Claire with a very Claire, big nose. who has a very, very big nose. As you and can a very big red nose. Very so red a common, uh, a common um, thing in publishing, isn't it? Or, or <laughs> no, no. In the old days, yes. But no, no more. No, it's all been cleaned up. Indeed. How old are you in the treehouse books that you make? Um, uh, Thomas, I have no idea because I can't count. As, as well established, and Terry doesn't know because he never had a birthday. His parents thought birthdays were too dangerous. So uh, Terry never had a birthday, but fortunately I did a nice thing. It's probably the only nice thing I've ever done in my life is I shared my birthday with Terry. And there we are having a shared birthday party. Uh, unfortunately, Thomas, I can't tell you how old we are because neither of us have any idea. Um, you can't count. Hi, I'm I Dean don't Terry. My name's Hannah. I'm my mate, so then I want to know if do you does Andy really not know how to count? And to, and, can, and and does Terry really make silly inventions? <laughs> Um, I think it's pretty well established I do not know how to count. Well, I can count to ten, just not in the right order yet. But I'm working <laughs> on it. And Terry really does make a lot of great inventions. This is the most famous, the spoon uh, which is, spoon allows soul. you to draw and eat at the same time. Uh, so, and we've got a special little treat for you today. Terry is going to show you all how to make a spoon soul with uh, a pencil, a spoon, and some sticky tape. Sticky Take it tape. away, Terry. Okay. okay, pencil. Look carefully. Spoon. Yeah. Sticky tape. Sticky tape. Can you and operate all those things? Oh, uh, look, I, I maybe need a little bit of help with go. that. There's um, some sticky. Because you just got to get the spoon uh, facing yeah. upwards and the pencil facing downwards. Yeah. And a little okay. bit of um, tape You might need a bit that. of extra there. And... Um, and, and um, I may have got your cut. finger stuck there, but that, that, never mind. Uh, I can now more, more, more tape. Um, possibly we've got. Uh, oh, that's better. Much better. No, 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 don't put the over. Hey, that's much better. Now let's. Uh, and there is a spoon saw, everyone. Yay! Big round of applause. Uh, is Gorgonzola a real fish? And the answer is no, because, uh, well, it was, but it exploded. Will Professor Stupido be at this event, says Mike. And uh, the answer is no, because he exploded as, no, well, he uninvented uh, no, himself. Like... We tricked him into uninventing himself. And the big, big, big question, how many treehouse stories are there going to be? And the answer is... None. More. No. More. No. More. 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 Def Twelve more. Definitely more, but we don't know how many. All we do know is that there'll be 13 new stories next year. And uh, we better get on with our... Um, we better get our, on with it. ...with our design for the 156-storey treehouse. So thank you all very much for tuning in today to our virtual 143 launch. Sorry about Terry. And uh, I'm oh, sorry about that too. <laughs> and we, I'm, how about I do the marshmallow cooking and yep. you start designing the new level? What, the new what's, what's a new level you would level. like? Frisbee level. We're thinking of a frisbee level. That's a great idea. Which, you know, um, that, but that looks like a fried egg level. Oh, okay. See you all later. Uh, we're, we're, we're busy. Have fun. Goodbye. We'll see you in the treehouse. Lovely talking to you. Yeah, we're open uh, eight days a week, eight, eight weeks, no, 353 weeks a year, 366 days. Uh, we're never closed. You got there with the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's challenging. <laughs> All right, how's our fried egg level going? Uh, yeah, uh, um, um, well, I'm uh, turning it into a, a, um, half a half frisbee a level, and it's just sliced this elephant, elephant in half. <laughs> so it's a very, very sharp frisbee. Oh. 
<laughs> right. I think that will upset people. Oh, I'm okay. burning, burning. It's getting hot here. It is getting um, hot. Fairy smashing level. Remember how you've we always wanted the fairy smashing the fairy level. Smashing level. Um, if you like fairies, now's a good time to uh, turn off. And fairy, I here. Very sweet fairy. What's that fairy ever done to anyone? Wow, well, they're annoying. I'd, I'd support it if it was like a bad. Visit wheelercentre.com for the best in books, writing and ideas from Melbourne, Australia and around the world.